Hello and welcome to the video. This video is to answer a question that I've had an awful lot. Now, in the past couple of weeks, I've done videos on this. This is the new Radio Master TX16S. This is their take on the T16 style radios, if I could say it. And then this one, we have the new T18 from Jumper. And actually, they look very, very similar indeed. But there are a couple of key differences between these two radios. And the question that I've had and it's a great question, is which would you choose? So in this video, I'm going to go through what I consider the main differences between these two radios and why I potentially would choose one over the other. But a couple of caveats before we get into that, because this is a very, very personal decision. Which of these two radios is really going to depend on how you fly, the features that you're interested in, uh, what you think of the different brands, all that kind of stuff. Now, at the moment, all of the detail on these radios is relatively new. They haven't been out very long. So in terms of how they're going to perform over time, we don't know. And this is kind of similar to what it was like back in the early days of the Free Sky Tyrannus, when that very first came out. Everyone was looking at it going, oh, that's a bit plasticky, and nobody's sure how it was going to survive. And here we are five years later, it's still one of the core radios for the hobby. I wouldn't personally use a multi-protocol radio like this for anything other than part flying. Uh, the max output on a lot of these modules is less uh, than you are allowed in lots of different places. So in the UK, I think it's 100 milliwatts. I think the USA is 200 milliwatts for 2.4 gig. A lot of the multi-protocol modules uh, are kind of the 80 range, something like that. So personally for me, I would only ever use them for park flying. If I'm gonna fly any farther, I would then put a, a, a real module in the JR Bay uh, to fly that far. So for me, I'm a big fan of Crossfire and I have the external uh, module from FreeSky. So I'm gonna be using FreeSky receivers in models that I'm gonna be flying uh, to the edge of visual line of sight, then I'll probably use that module instead. But the multi-protocol module does give me the option to connect pretty much anything and fly pretty much anything. So with those caveats said, let me get into the things that I think are the major differences between these two radios. For me, the differences boil down to five pretty fundamental things. Now, you could argue all day about whether or not the folding handle is important, whether or not the different gimbal types are important. But for me, these are the five things that will make me choose one over the other. That is whether or not the 2.4 gigahertz antenna is internal or external, whether there is R9M support included in it. For some people, that will be a big deal. Whether or not there is a touchscreen installed from day one, whether that's important to you. Whether or not there are exposed UARTs or auxiliary connections for third party devices to plug into the radio and also what the radio actually feels like in the hand because both Radio Master and Jumper have gone for slightly different layouts. So for me, 2.4 gigahertz antenna, I want it to be external. I want to be able to move it around. Having the internal antenna on the Jumper T18 uh, on all versions apart from the basic level, which has the four in one, uh, that internal antenna for me is a big turn off. In terms of the R9M support, if uh, I was a big R9M fan or hadn't tried long range and I was interested in giving it a go, then the tick might be in the jumper side of this particular list. However, I'm a Crossfire pilot. I love Crossfire. I'm only interested in making sure that Crossfire is supported at full speed with CRSF in the JR module bay. And both of them have that ability. So the fact that R9M support isn't included out the box in the Radio Master, I don't actually care about. I'm quite happy about that because I'm not going to use it. Next one is the touchscreen. Now the touchscreen is included in the Radio Master, but it is an optional upgrade later on if you're gonna go for something like the Jumper. Now the touchscreen isn't going to be supported until at least OpenTX 2.4. So although the touchscreen is there, 
in the Radio Master, it's not something that's turned on. Now, I'm not expecting the touchscreen to be a major revolution in terms of the way the radio works, because if, like me, you're looking at the model when you're flying, you kind of rely on the tactile buttons. You actually feel them under your fingertips to flick them and the switches and sliders. But in terms of model setup, it could be quite a cute thing to be able to drag and drop things around in the screen and make the setup easier. And I am fascinated to see how OpenTX design the interface, particularly with the attempts in the past with things like the Nirvana radio that haven't worked particularly well. Next one is the exposed UARTs. Now at the bottom of the RadioMaster TX16S, as well as all the other connections, there is the UART. And I really like the idea. I like the idea of potentially plugging in external telemetry radios or a GPS to allow for things like follow me modes in multi-rotors. Those kind of things I'm really fascinated by. And again, they're just not there on the Jumper T18 at the moment. And the last one is a really <laughs> very personal choice thing, whether or not you like how it feels in the hand. The RadioMaster TX16S has those thicker pieces at the back. Uh, they don't appear to come off in the same way. They may be transferable onto the jumper unit and maybe Jumper will bring out those slightly thicker pieces. I'm a thumber uh, and for thumbers, I think the RadioMaster TX16S is a more comfortable radio in the hand. If you're a pincher, then you probably don't want those pads on the back. So for me, it's always gonna be feels thicker. So that's why I think for me, the Radio Master is the better choice. Uh, I'm not bothered about R9M, I'm a Crossfire pilot. I also like the UARTs at the bottom. Uh, that just means for me, I'm fascinated to see what happens with those, knowing how flexible uh, those universal ports are in things like flight controllers. I really want to see what OpenTX does with them and the fact there is great. Touchscreen, as I said, I'm not particularly bothered about. Um, it's one of those things that I could take it or leave it. I've played with touchscreens on radios before and I like the tactile feeling of buttons when I'm at the field, uh, particularly when I'm not looking at the radio. I should be looking at the uh, at the model, I'd rather just use the button. So the touchscreen is nice, but not a killer function. The big thing for me is the external 2.4 antenna. The fact that it's internal and it's horizontal on the jumper radio is a big deal for me because I'm gonna be using this antenna potentially with other things. Um, with the spectrum receivers that I've still got and all those kind of bind and fly models that I've still got kicking around. Not having the ability to orientate it in the way that's going to make sense. Um, most of the antennas that I have in my vehicles are uh, kind of at a 45 degree angle. So, you know, having it vertical is kind of makes more sense for the way my models are set up is a big deal. And I'm sure lots of people, when they get their Jumper T18, will actually get a UFL to SMA connector and potentially put um, another antenna somewhere else on it uh, so that there is that ability to have that external antenna. But I think that is, is for me, the thing that would make me choose the Radio Master. That's the clincher for me. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, both of them are fantastic radios. It depends on what you're interested in. But for me, the Radio Master pips the jumper at the post because for me, more of the important things are on this one. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.